No one knows what causes lifelong face blindness. It was discovered so recently, scientists are just beginning to unravel its secrets. And some of the clues are coming from people who once had normal face recognition, but lost it after suffering damage to part of the brain. And in an interesting twist, those people are also offering insight into the way the rest of us recognize faces. Imagine waking up after a trauma and not being able to recognize the people closest to you. The story will continue in a moment. That's what happened to Colleen Castaldo. Up until the fall of 2009, mm -hmm. did you have any trouble recognizing faces at all? No, not at all. Like everybody else. Like right? everybody else, yeah. That all changed late one night when Colleen had a seizure and was rushed to the hospital. Her doctors found a brain tumor and did surgery to remove it. But as she recovered, she started noticing that something wasn't right. The nurses. I thought that I was meeting them each for the first time. And then I would, you know, listen to them and think, I don't know, they, they were acting like they knew me already. Oh, disorienting. And, um, she figured it was the medication until her close friend Doreen came to visit wearing white. And Colleen assumed she was part of the medical staff. I looked at her, smiled, and I turned back to my husband and started to talk to him. And he stood up and said, Doreen. And I looked. Doreen, and then it hit me. I knew right then and there, this is the problem I had been having. That I, faces. I just, yeah, faces. Now, even uh, faces she Clooney. knew well before. No. Okay, well that's George Clooney. Oh, wow, no, I wouldn't know that. Are a mystery to her. No, I don't know who that is. Who is it? The president. So this is the right hemisphere okay. here. Brad Duchesne showed me an MRI scan of Colleen's brain. Is that a hole in her brain? Yeah, that's right. It's in the right temporal lobe. So back here, That's right? right. And the location of that hole where the tumor had been was a clue. If removing that area caused the loss of face recognition, could that be where all our brains process faces? It turns out that neuroscientists have been trying to figure out how it is that our brains recognize faces for decades. Face recognition is a very difficult problem because all faces are basically the same. MIT neuroscientist Nancy Canwisher. There are these two roundish things here, there's this thing there, there's this thing there, they're all the same. And so discriminating one face from another is a very computationally difficult thing because it's those subtle differences in the same basic structure that distinguish one thing from another. And it is exactly those subtle differences face blind people like Joe Livingston miss. Um, I could describe anything that I can put into words eye color, general overall shape, um, whether your ears stick out. But those things would bring it down, perhaps from the population of the world, to a few million. So she could say this person has dark eyes, high cheekbones, an oval face, which would allow Joe to distinguish her from this person. But this face and this face? Impossible. I can mm. say what I can see, but I cannot say the micro measurements that are what tell a normal person that it's you and not somebody of the same specification. But how is it that the rest of us can perceive these two people as distinct individuals despite the similarities? An important clue comes from what we can't distinguish. As we saw earlier, faces upside down like these two Duchesne showed me, which looked very similar. Maybe you don't even see that there's I any difference between... I see something different in the lower lip. Eyes are a little different under the, the eyes. The eyes are a little different. But then if I show them to you upright, so here's the one that you saw on the left there. Mm -hmm. Looks perfectly normal. And then oh. here's the one you saw on the right. You saw oh my upside goodness. down. The eyes and mouth in the, the photo on the right had been turned upside down. <gasps> and now the face looks really grotesque. Yeah, but, but upside down... Upside down, it's really hard to see that. If you look at a face upside down, you're very bad at recognizing it. If you look at a word or an object or a scene, you can recognize it fine upside down. So what did that so, tell you? It tells you that there's something very special about face recognition. It works in a very different way right. from recognition of everything else. And that got Canwisher wondering if there might be a part of the brain responsible just for seeing faces. 
she started putting people with normal face recognition into MRI scanners and watching what happens in their brains as they looked at different images. Is this what she's seeing? This is what she's seeing. She's seeing faces. Exactly. Okay. And now she's seeing objects because we want to know not just what parts of the brain are active when you see faces, but what parts are more active when you see faces than when you see objects. Can Wisher discovered that there was indeed a place in the brain that becomes very active when we look at faces. And in every subject, boom, there was this nice big response there. It was very exciting. And it was right in the same area where Colleen's tumor had been. It's called the fusiform face area. So could that be what's missing in people with lifelong face blindness, like Jacob Hodes? Can Wisher put him in the scanner to find out? I really did not expect to see a fusiform face area. So you thought there'd be nothing there? Like as if yeah. instead of having a bullet go through it, he was just born without it. That's right. Okay. That's right. And, and he looked at the data, and his face area was beautiful. It's textbook. So sit here. She scanned Joe, Ben, and Meg as well. And they had fusiform face areas too. So what does that say to you? <laughs> it tells us that the problem is not that this thing doesn't exist. There it is. But see, that's the fun of science. It's fun to be told you're just completely and totally wrong. Because now you have to go back and, you know, think anew. And one thing she and other researchers are thinking about is a phenomenon as mystifying as face blindness. Thank you. Have a good day. It's polar opposite. Super recognizers like Jennifer Jarrett, who say they recognize almost every face they have ever seen. Waiters? Yes. Salespeople? Yes. Yes, oh, absolutely. like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll be walking down the street, and I'll see someone, and I'll think, oh, retail. And then I'll remember, oh, OK, that person works at a whatever store, and that's where I, or they used to work at that store 10 years ago. And then I remember. 10 um, years ago? Yes, yes. So there, it doesn't matter how far back you saw these yes. people. So as long as you look at a person and no, take notice, they're in there. I, I don't even know how to get rid of people. <laughs> Only a handful of super recognizers have been discovered so far. And Duchesne and his colleagues had to come up with a whole new way to test them. So here are three faces here, which you're familiar with. I am? It's called the before they were famous test, because super recognizers can also recognize faces as they change through time. Does that help at all? He, he no sure longer I has hair. Hair, yeah. That's Dick Cheney. Oh my god. That's Dick yeah. Cheney? Yeah. He told me the top right was Richard yeah. Gere and the bottom, Nancy Pelosi. Wow. Those three people have changed dramatically. <laughs> he even gave me a hint with this one. He's now an actor. And I'm supposed to know this actor? Clearly, I am not a super recognizer. That's George Clooney. Man. And these super recognizers just the know this. The supers are really good at recognizing these faces. Um, George Clooney. How could you tell it was George Clooney? It just looked <laughs> like George Clooney to me. Is it? Oh, Prince, Prince Charles. Charles. Ooh, wow. Oh, Madonna. Uh, Michael Jordan. Oh, <laughs> that's uh, Cato Kalin. The O.J. Simpson yes. trial. Wow, you are good. But we thought we had finally stumped her with this one. She said she only had a guess. If I were to guess, I would say Mike Wallace. That is Mike Wallace. <laughs> she recognized Mike Wallace as a six-year-old. I, I, I don't even understand how you do that. I can't fathom it. As people age, I guess the aging process somehow in my brain just seems very sort of superficial. And, you know, as if, if someone gets a haircut, you, you can still recognize them. Still the same face to me. It's just the adult version. So why is 60 years like a haircut to her? while face-blind people can't recognize someone they just saw. A team of scientists at Harvard has begun scanning the brains of super-recognizers, too, to see if they might yield any clues. The science of facial recognition is in its infancy, but new discoveries can't come fast enough for one last person we'd like you to meet, 13-year-old Tim McDonough from Boston, who is severely face-blind. So can you describe what it feels like? When someone comes up, you know you're supposed to know who they are. I usually just say, you know, hi, nice to see you. So you, you sometimes pretend. Yeah. You fake it. I fake it, yeah. Do you think it's not your mom? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
that actually was your mom. <laughs> Tim is working with the Harvard team to see if they can help him learn to recognize his mother's face. Now, is this one your mom or not? Yes, we can start at the top. We could do eyebrows, eyes, nose. You could even use the cheeks there. It's part of a pilot program to see if face blindness might someday be treatable. This one's a little bit harder. So far, it's not. I don't know. I just hope that nobody tries to talk to me because if they do, they... Yeah. They want to talk about something you've done with them or yeah. something. Yeah, and I, I don't know who they are. So it must be really hard to make friends. It is, yeah. It takes me a while to make friends. It turns out making friends can be tricky at both ends of the face recognition spectrum. Super recognizers can seem like stalkers. I would see someone, you know, weeks or months later at a party, and people would say, oh, do you know each other? And I'd say yes, and the other person would say no. And I'd say, no, don't you remember the first week of classes? You were walking to no. English class with someone. <laughs> and people would look at me really strangely and sort of uncomfortably, I think, a lot. Jennifer says she's now learned to take cues from others, ironically, just as face blind people do. I'll play this eye contact game where I'll wait. I'm not gonna really look at you, but I'll wait to see if you look at me. And then, oh, you look at me, oh, look, oh, hi. So you're always waiting for a cue from them. Yeah, so I'll hang back a little bit, which I don't wanna do. In any social situation, are you always a little anxious? I'm more than a little anxious, and I, and I, I tend to, uh, to keep my mouth closed before I make some awful blunder. Of course, uh, another tactic or strategy is to smile at everybody. That's what Chuck Close told us he does. You have to be really charming. <laughs> if you are going to insult them by not remembering them, you just have to be extremely charming so that people don't hold this stuff against you. Do you feel now that you're missing out on something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I notice a loss. I understand someone by an abstraction. I put together a set of information that to me means mother or means Leslie. But it's not a visualization not a visual. of a face. And the question, the thing that I wonder next, you know, uh, is how does it affect even things like love? How does it? When people talk about love, they say, I carry the person with me. I carry their image with me. I don't carry their image. Does that mean I experience it differently? And how would I ever know? I don't know. There's a like long tail of stuff that happens that you're missing, connections you're not making. Still. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least yeah. now we understand why. Yeah, right. And it's therapeutic, but it doesn't fix it. Go to 60minutesovertime.com to take a test to see if you're a super recognizer. Sponsored by Viagra.